let's talk about the guys that nobody's really talking about but may have a major impact in the game. Guys like Vinny Peretta, who you talked to earlier. Who's one of my personal favorites, especially coming into this game. You know, maybe the most asked question all week long is the comparison between Adrian Peterson and Ian Johnson. You know, and realistically, as a lot of people have noted, is that there's not a whole lot of comparison between the two backs, except for the fact that they're both very productive and have both had, you know, extremely good seasons, even though Peterson missed, you know, half of the season. But a guy like Peretta is one of the people that I really appreciate, and I'm, I'm really excited to see what his role is going to end up being in this game because he's the kind of guy that ex that's explosive. And some of the Oklahoma defenders have you know, recognized him as a guy that they have to be concerned about because they can split him out wide, they can use him in passing you know, schemes, they can use him as a running back. Uh, he's, the, he's the kind of kid that can have 65 yards and really have a big impact on moving the ball, but nobody really remembers it because Ian gets his 120. But when it really comes down to it, it's the 280 rushing yards, you know, not the 120 of Ian Johnson. It's the stuff that you know, Brett Denton and Vinny Peretta pick up that really makes that difference in you know, really establishing consistent running game throughout the whole game. What about a guy like Derek Schumann? You know, we're here all week. The Broncos cannot match up physically with Oklahoma. Schumann is one of the guys you look at physically. He's not a guy that's going to wear down come the fourth quarter. He's the guy that has stepped up in the past, made huge plays for the Broncos, but he's not, he's not there every game. Derek Schumann's one of those tight ends that can block really well. He's on the end, and he didn't really stand out too much in the beginning of the season, but... You know, Zabransky wasn't getting sacked either. He was doing his job. Midway through the season, he started running out there and getting really good passes. He started catching them, getting some touchdowns even. He can move. He can, do, he can block and he can move really well too. He's one of those guys that's just going to make a big appearance in this game. Let's move over to the defensive side of the ball. Dustin, I know you had a chance to talk to some of the guys in the secondary. Yeah, I got to talk to Orlando Skandrick and Marty Tabin, and they kind of both said the same thing about the game. They're, they were talking a lot about Malcolm Kelly and about the – the impact he's going to have on this game and how they're going to defend him. And neither one really seemed too incredibly worried about what what they were going to bring to the table, the Sooners. They said that they don't really run complicated routes. They kind of just come up simple and pure and to the point, and they pound you down the throat. That's what they do. That's their style. And all they really have to do is stay key, stay on their men, and they'll, they're not really afraid of what kind of a day they're going to have. You know, one of the more interesting stories that we've come across is the return of the hometown kid himself, Dryson James, a guy that, um, you know, is quiet, hasn't always talked to the media. Um, you got a chance to sit down with him. Um, you know, what, what was his thoughts being here? Senior, last game, and he's doing it in his hometown. You know, as you said, Dryson's been one of those kids that hasn't always been there available for the media. And so when I came to this interview, it was my first time actually talking to him, you know, officially with the media. And the thing that really struck me is how uh, well-spoken he was you know, and how, um, how well he really handled himself. And he, he was a great interview. And he really did address about coming back to Phoenix, getting to be around his family. You know, he said he's going to have a big following at the game. And you could really tell that it was going to be an important place for him to play that final college football game. A guy that's, you know, well-spoken like that, you know, that's got to be kind of surprising. If he's, if he's a guy that, you know, kind of shied away from the media in the past, you know, you're not expecting a guy to be as articulate as he was. And I think that's something that we commonly do is assume that if a guy doesn't like talking to the media, yeah. he can't talk to the media, okay. or he's got something against the media. You know, in all reality, you know, I think he is just a quiet individual. You know, a soft-spoken guy that just likes to go, go to work and take care of business and play football. And he's not really interested in going and sitting in front of a camera. And so it was, I think it was kind of a fortunate interview for him to come and sit down and uh, reflect in such an emotional time. All right, well, let's hear it. Talk about coming home, you know, being a Phoenix guy and uh, mm. being able to come back, you know, come back to your area and play this last game. You it's know, it, it's it's. I want to say it's a dream come true, but at the same time, you know, it's more like business. And uh, you know, I can't actually sit here and feed off the fact that uh, you know I'm playing here for my last senior game. I mean, if I was in California or Boise, I mean, I'm going to play the exact same way. So, you know, in the end, I'm going to appreciate it. And uh, you know, like I like I told uh, the Idaho Statesman guy. You know, it's it really is a, a blessing to actually be here to play for my last game. So, um, I know a lot of the other seniors, uh, you know, have, have not really been emphasizing much on the field in the last game. Is it something you've thought about much, or is it one of those things that you know it's just another game and you're just gonna take? Um, it you know, it, it's it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be a heartbreaking. You know, at the end of the you know whenever the fourth quarter goes and we're all up in the locker room looking at each other and you know happy that we won and. Uh, Happy that we played our hearts out, but you know it's going to be sad that you know this is the last time we play as a group, and uh, you know, but we just got to be happy with, at the fact that you know we went undefeated, 
Uh, we played our hearts out, you know, and all that summer training, all the decks, all the all the yelling at each other, blood, sweat, and tears, and everything just finally paid off. And, you know, look where it's got us. And um, hopefully the young guys will be able to take in accountability, you know, what the what the seniors have done and what the upperclassmen have done to get us this far. So. Let's talk about that, uh, that undefeated senior season. I mean, can, can you put into words, I mean, how, uh, how great of a way this has been for you guys to finish? Well, the senior season and along, and all, all in two words is basically just, well, maybe three. <laughs> it's overcoming adversity. That's all it is, overcoming adversity. And, uh, you know, we've been doing a pretty good job with that. And, uh, you know, some guys have had bad games, me, myself. I mean, I've, during, during the midseason, I mean, I played a couple of games that weren't up to par or up to my standards. And, you know, I mean, I'm sure a couple other guys can say the same. And basically, you just overcome that. And whenever the tough game's on the line and, uh, you know, you just got to show up as a player and help your team out and uh, overcome it as a team. So that's basically how the season has been. Now you talk about overcoming adversity in the year. Uh, I remember it was Hawaii. First half, he had, had a couple drop balls. <laughs> but Jared kept coming back to you, you know, and he, he never he never uh, lost confidence in you. And I think you ended up leading the team in, in receptions, you know, because you had a great second half. I mean, how, how much has that been a, a key as far as, you know, your guys' chemistry and him having so much confidence in you that he never gave up and just kept coming back to you? Well, you know what that was was like you know, yeah, I, I dropped three balls and uh, you know the team the team never turned their back on me. The coaches never pulled me out the game. Um, you know me myself, I was I was the hardest one on myself. You know I couldn't I couldn't believe you know the drops that I had and shoot um after the game the fans couldn't even believe it. But you know what I'm 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 happy to be around you know a team that's so confident in me that uh, kept on coming to me and you know what ended up being in a close game you know. They still kept me in it, and they still kept me going. And you know, big catches were being made all over by all the wideouts and uh, even running backs. And you know, Z had a, Z had a good game that game. And uh, you know, I'm happy that you know he still had confidence to come my way. And you know, that's basically how how the season has been. You know, whenever somebody's doing bad, we never give up on them. We know that uh, that what they do is is in their hearts, and 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 that they were in the summer with us. You know, dying over the over decks, over conditioning. And, we know that they're going to give us 110 percent and they're trying their hardest and it just may not be coming all together. It's just that last two percent that they're searching for in just time in the 48 minutes that we play, we find it. So now are you going to uh, you're going to have much of a cheering section of Z said he had you know, like 50 some people coming from Hermiston. I mean, are you going to have much of a much of a cheering section there? Uh, I got about on top of the six tickets that we got. I have about 40 people on top of that coming. Really? So. And I had some last minute people come, wanted to come that I couldn't get tickets for. Yeah, so yeah. it would have been a lot more than that. But being know. in Phoenix, is there any, I mean, has there been anybody in, you know, that you may be old friends or something, or somebody you've been able to get in contact with, uh, you know, family, stuff like that, that, um, you know, just because you are in Phoenix, you've been able to uh, um, get in contact with you down here? Actually, my son, my son actually made it out here. And, oh, really? you know, that, that was a blessing to actually have him out here yeah. for my last game. And Arizona, and you know he he got to see a, a lot of family, even after uh, you know he came to a couple of my games this year, and he's you know he he lives away from Phoenix, and it's just good to actually you know have the team out here playing, so he could come out here and you know see his grandma, grandpa, you know all those all his family members that haven't seen him in a while. So, well, thanks. I appreciate the drive. All, right, all right, guys, I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today. I want to encourage everybody to tune in to Arbiter Sports Talk. If you want to hear more in-depth analysis from Jake and Dustin themselves, they're actually going to have the assistant sports editor of um, the Idaho Press Tribune, Phil Daly, Arbiter alumni. Guys, he was in our seat not too yeah. long ago. We're going to make Phil cut loose today. I'll give you that yeah. much. Yeah. Some room. Well, we're going to see about that. Phil's a pretty, uh, pretty serious guy sometimes, so we're going to, uh, I'm going to encourage you guys to try to shake that guy. All right, guys, that's all the time we have for now. Again, tune in. Arbiter Sports Talk going to be up later tonight. Phil Daly, special guest.